Well, look at you, thinking about becoming a professional creative, a videographer to be specific. Well, I'm here to tell you the ugly truth about becoming a video professional. What's up, Internet? Robert T. Garden here with another video. Today we are talking about the ugly truth about being a video professional, the things that no one tells you when you're first starting out. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. So if that's something that you think you might be interested in, stick around because I'm sure that there's some value that you'll be able to rip off here. I mean, consume. Again, like I said, we we're talking about the whole concept of the ugly parts about being a video professional. As somebody that has been doing this professionally for over six years now, supporting my family for inside Los Angeles, California, I have a lot to say about the things that are not so great about becoming a video professional. But if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you how I make it all worthwhile and what keeps me coming back to this crazy profession that I call the way that I make my living. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is is the concept of not having a traditional nine to five. Now, the long hours that are associated with becoming a creative professional, a entrepreneur, somebody that owns their own business have kind of become synonymous. So this one shouldn't be something that is surprising to you. And in fact, getting away from a traditional nine to five is a reason I found that most people have started to shy away from becoming some type of corporate entity and move into a freelance and or gig economy style job. If that's something that you've done or one of the reasons that you're looking at becoming a creative professional, go ahead and drop a like and or comment in this video and tell me exactly the details in terms of why you're leaving your traditional situation of a job so that we can have a conversation about it. For me personally, it was a situation where I worked in record labels for over 10 years. I got my MBA, went back in, started to move things around and realized this traditional corporate structure is just not something that I really vibed with anymore. It was serving me incredibly well and it was giving me the ability to have a family and a home and all these different things. But what I really wanted to do was to be able to create my own products and have impact in a specific demographic of people, industries and those sorts of things that I chose. And the corporate setting just wasn't something that was working for me. It felt too constraining and I had to check in with a bunch of different bosses and not to mention that I had a fixed price tag on my forehead, which my bosses decided how much money I was worth. And that's the amount of money that I was making for that particular year. And it really wasn't a ton of flexibility for me to do something like that. But the nine to five hours were really something that was kind of convenient. When I was done, I was done. I didn't have to worry about the next thing I was doing or the clients that I had to serve or the fact that maybe after going to dinner with my family, I had to go back to work to make sure that I got that deadline project done on time. The hours that you're associating to this particular job really, <clears throat> at least in the beginning, are something that you have to be very flexible about and realize that you're not working a traditional 40 hour work week. A lot of the times it's much more work than you would think. The next thing I want to talk about is the ambiguity in when your money is coming in. Now, traditionally in a nine to five setting or some type of a corporate job, you know that every month, every week, every two weeks, bi-monthly, you're going to be paid a fixed amount of money and you know and can rely on that money showing up in your bank account. But that's not the case when you're a freelance creative. You're constantly moving things around and playing a chess game in terms of when your accounts payable are coming in, how you're invoicing your content, what you're supposed to be doing in terms of how you garner that sort of information. That stuff can be very stressful and it actually is not even really that much related to doing the creative work that you're setting out and are really passionate about doing. It's a whole other arm of having a business that not a lot of people talk about is the hunt for when your money's coming and being on top of how your money is getting in your account. Now there's a whole sleuth of things that we can do in terms of kind of making sure that that's a tighter time frame and ensuring that payments come in on time and all that different stuff. But that's a different video, not necessarily for this one, but having this weird flexibility on when your money is coming in and planning for the inefficiencies and or inconsistencies and in where your money is coming from and when it hits your account is definitely something that you should be aware of. It's not something to deter you so much as just be on top of the fact that you have to manage when your accounts payable are going to be paid, when your invoices are being paid and set up terms that make sense for you and your structure that you have in your business. The other thing that nobody really talks to you about is being a freelance creative is that you have to manage your own time. And now this one, I'm sure that there are some people out there. If you're watching this video and this one's you, let me know in the comment below again. I'm interested to see what this community has to say about this. 
you have to manage your own time and really make sure that your schedule is airtight so that you can be as effective and efficient in meeting your deadlines as possible. I know for myself as somebody that is a creative kind of free spirit, I've got ADD from the time I was a little kid. This is something that's really difficult for me to consistently manage on a regular basis, but I set up systems and protocols a long time ago that set me on the right path. Specifically, I write down everything I have to do for the next day, the night before I write it down for the morning because when you win the morning, you win the day. I have another weekly little planner that I write out all my stuff in for things I need to accomplish during the week. And then my actual hour by hour calendar is loaded up in Google so that I can see exactly what I should be doing to manage my time effectively. Now, is this a perfect strategy and I nail it every single day? No, of course not. Time is flexible and it's always on the move and sometimes things go over, you know, the amount of work that I've been doing, those sorts of things. But for the most part, I need to make sure that I have some sort of set schedule every single day so that I wake up knowing exactly what I need to do and hit the ground running. If this is you and something that you're struggling with, let me know because I'd love to show you guys what my system is that's worked for me. And maybe you can pick and choose a couple different things that you can implement on your own. But managing your own time, making sure that you're hitting those deadlines because a real big difference between an amateur and a professional is that they're doing what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. Seth Godin always says real artists ship and that means they get their content out the door to the person that it's supposed to go to when they say they're going to do it and they communicate those things along the way. Managing your own time is definitely a pain in the ass for me but it's been one of the biggest differentiators in my success because when you do it effectively people can rely on you and when they can rely on you they'll pay you some money. Now, so far we've talked about the fact that there are long hours. There's no real set time frame that you should be working. We talked about the fact that you need to manage your own time. But sometimes, even if you do all of those things correctly, you still get difficult clients, clients that are just kind of a pain in your ass that you don't necessarily understand exactly what went wrong. Now, this is really a symptom of not vetting your client up front and making sure that there's alignment, not just in the product that you're going to create, but the way in which you're going to create it. It's setting those expectations up front in your discovery call and in your pre-production that's going to allow that client to understand what your process is. You both get clarity on exactly what that project is and what they need. But even still, sometimes you think you do all the right things and check all the right boxes. And every once in a while, there's just a client that's just a big pain in the butt. And there's ways of managing this effectively and communication and kind of making sure that you're not being taken advantage of when they're asking and pushing for different things. But the good thing about being a freelance creative is that you get to fire your bad clients. Make sure that you do what you say you're going to do. Make sure that client is happy and you have a satisfactory rapport with them that got what they needed to. But at the end of the day, you just know you don't have to work with that person again. And you learn a valuable lesson about what it means to vet a client and work with them and set those expectations and the communication up front so that you can do better the next time. That's really what it comes down to. But Sometimes there's really difficult clients and sometimes they drive you crazy. Their notes are out of control, the things that they have in terms of expectation, the scope changing in the middle of a project. And these are all things that you need to be aware of and understand that that doesn't mean that you are a failure as a creative or that you're doing things poorly or wrong. It just means that there's areas for improvement because it's not just about the creativity, it's actually more about the business and the way you handle that business that's going to ensure long-term success. Dealing with difficult clients sometimes sucks, but it's part of the business. So we've talked about all these different things about why it sucks to deal with clients, the ugly truth about videography, the time management, not knowing where your next paycheck's going to come, all of those different things. But I don't want to end on that note. I want to talk about the positives of when you choose and commit to really doing this lifestyle in the best way possible for yourself. It's really one of the raddest parts of my life period. The fact that I can call this a job that I get to create things and do things that I was doing for free because it was a fun hobby. That's the way I get to support my family, my two sons, my wife, my beautiful dog, Dottie. I just get to do fun things all the time. And my work is a part of that holistic fun and things that get me excited. I have the freedom to choose what I want to do and what I don't want to do. If I work my ass off and get ahead of the game a little bit, I can check out and take a vacation with my family whenever I want to. If I worked really hard that week before and I need to be able to spend a little bit more time with my kids and go off to Disneyland and spend some time with them, just enjoying the fact that we're together, I can do that too. If I want to take off a night and go to the movies, if I want to do something during the middle of the day, I can do that. I have freedom and autonomy in doing what I'm doing because I've managed my schedule 
schedule effectively, I manage my clients well, and I've gotten to a place where I can kind of push and pull and understand the fluidity of what that schedule looks like. I have a really rad job, something that a lot of people covet, and I'm totally aware of that. And because of my hard work and dedication, I've figured out a way to make it work. And because of that, I get to sit on the other side of this fence and kind of hold out my hand and be like, yo, I got you, my man, or my person, or whoever you are on the other side of this camera. It is a totally possible thing. And there's difficulties in every single job that we face. And there's stressors in every single situation that we're going to face in life. And so to me, it's really a matter of what is the thing that I want to commit myself to? It's this crazy, hairy, audacious goal. I'm sure a lot of you have told people, I want to be a full-time creative. And they looked at you and be like, why don't you get a little more secure job? Something that's a little bit more predictable. Why don't you go into business? Why don't you do these things? But you know what, damn it? That's not the stuff that makes us happy. What makes us happy is getting out of bed hitting the ground running and creating awesome shit that makes us fired up and if we can find a way to find alignment between a client that has a need and the product that we can create and call that our job man we really have won even before we woke up in the morning so this is totally possible and if you like this video then like the damn video and if you want to subscribe to this channel to get more inspiring shit like this and the truth about being a freelance creative well go ahead and click the button big guy i don't know what you're waiting for but with that in mind ladies and germs this is tea garden with another video in the can i really hope that you enjoy this one i really hope i get to talk to you guys a little bit more in the comments and see what's going on and with that in mind i'll see you guys next week for the next one enjoy it peace